What's wrong? Well, thank you for taking the time, Carrie. One thing that I'm fascinated about you, uh, I know some people know, but some people don't know, you used to be in the media. And amidst a successful career, you left your position in the media. And I'm wondering if you can explain what led you to leave the media? And then also, what do you see the media is currently doing to our country, for better or worse? Gosh, there's... It's so sad that the media has, has, in my opinion, in some ways turned on our country. I worked really hard to uh, become a journalist. I found it to be a noble career and profession for many, many years. I was blessed to cover Arizona for 27 years. And it's no secret the media became more and more and more liberal and leftist and uh, progressive, as they say. But I always felt that when I was in the media, I could kind of hold my ground and make sure that whatever I put out on the air was truthful and honest. And I'll be honest, during during COVID, I think for a lot of us, we realized the professions we were in had changed a lot. You know, whether you worked in a hospital setting, whatever you're, whether you worked for a a pharmaceutical company, people were waking up to, oh my goodness, um, I lift my nose up the, off the uh, grindstone and I look around and my industry has changed. And I didn't feel that I was able to be fully truthful anymore in in journalism. So I decided to step away. I did a lot of praying. You know, I was at that point making a lot of money, a very, very nice uh, paycheck, and loved the people of Arizona too much to not be able to be fully truthful with them. And what happened, I believe, is that corporate media purchased up all of the media outlets. It used to be, JP, where... There, you might your your local town might have three or four stations, and one of them might be owned by a local family or a local company. And then pretty soon, a conglomeration came in and said, "We want to buy a bunch of TV stations." And it went from having hundreds of owners to um, just twenty owners, and then it went down to five or six owners owning everything. And that's when they decided to downsize and cut costs and get rid of the seasoned journalists who actually learned how to be journalists where you tell both sides of the story and you don't put your opinion into it. And for every old seasoned journalist they got rid of, they could hire three or four or five fresh out of journalism school, young people who were not trained to be journalists where you tell both sides of the story. That's how I think it went off the skids. That's where things started to change. And we started to see in newsrooms around this country, a rather than journalists being hired, young people who were trained to be social justice warriors and advocates for whatever their uh, ideology was. And that's where I think things went really bad in journalism and it became propaganda. Um, Unfortunately, the way we're educating our children right now, there is indoctrination going on K through 12. And then whatever's not accomplished there, they try to finish off in college. And we're seeing the ramifications of that in our media. A lot of these people, I would say 90 plus percent are liberals and they're pushing a liberal, even in some cases, socialist agenda and and lying to the people. And it's dangerous because we rely on our news sources to get truthful information and it hasn't been truthful for a long time. It's getting worse, not better. Yeah, I find it amazing. You know, indoctrination of any sort is scary because in my opinion, it violates the sovereignty of one's God-given miraculous mind and, and heart. But then someone goes to university maybe to become a journalist, which is um, doesn't exist too much anymore. But then they're paying tens of thousands of dollars to be indoctrinated, which is just uh, I don't know if that's the pyramid scheme of the century or not. Which uh, lastly on this, uh, Carrie, this clip of yours was seen, I don't know, millions of times. But I just wanted to say, out of everything I've seen on the internet this year, when there's the clip of you being approached by the CNN reporter and you were just so fast, witty, yet bold and courageous on your feet when she asked for the interview and (laughs) we we can do it on one condition, it airs on CNN Plus. I just jumped out of my seat like I watched my team score the winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. (laughs) Uh, thank you for for being bold and courageous and not bending down to you know the their propaganda arms. We have to start fighting back and letting them know we are on to what they're doing. 
We know what's going on. We know they're pushing an agenda. And you see it with the um, America First type candidates out there. They're calling us names, racist, Nazi, all of this stuff. It's really obvious what's happening. They're picking the people they want in office who will push the agenda they have. And I believe it's a globalist agenda. They do not want strong individual nations and strong people. They want a, the globalist agenda that's been pushed for a long time. And it is a slow, steady march, I believe, into communism. And we're not going to let America go without a fight. We're not going to do it. And we've got a bunch of fighters standing up right now in the form of many times mama bears. It's the mama bear movement. And so um, I have great hope, JP. I know it seems like we're in very perilous times, and indeed we are. But I'm seeing when I'm on the campaign trail, people from all walks of lives, people who've never been involved in politics, they're standing up and saying, no, we're not letting this country go. We're going we're gonna to vote and use the ballot box to uh, impact where this future is and, and, and chart our own course. And I believe we'll be victorious and we'll start to turn things around.